You could be as good as Amy. There you go. All right, why don't we begin? Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sanctuary Community Church's live Zoom church service this Sunday, May 17th, 2020. Um, forgive us for the technological problems and the flurry of emails this morning. I take full credit for those emails. <laughs> all that was helpful and all that maybe wasn't so much. So sorry about that. But Zoom was having worldwide problems, which some of you may still be experiencing. We're not sure. It looks as though it's working for many of us. Uh, if you're on Facebook Live, hi. Good to see you from a distance. Um, so we'll continue on here. If we do have problems, we'll likely transition to our YouTube Live page. And so we'll share that. You, you may have seen that email. We'll share it also on our Facebook page but we will keep going, assuming this is all working. Um, we here at Sanctuary are a community that makes space for every race, ethnicity, age, orientation, and gender identity. We welcome belief and doubt, devotion and exploration, while hoping to connect with God, one another, and our world as we do life together. Uh, it is a rainy morning at least here in Iowa City. And I know many of you are joining us from the east and west, north and south, uh, but the rain was, was, I have to say, lovely here. Um, but I'm wondering, what are some of your favorite activities in the rain? Anyone get out in the rain and still play? Uh, kids out in the rain or just staying inside? If you're willing, I thought we could share in the comments section some of our favorite activities for rainy days. So ask your kids, you can have them comment, uh, or you can quote them in comments, or make up what your kids might say. Um, but share them in the comments section, things to do in the rain. And maybe you'll catch some fun ideas uh, for next time. It rains. So I do have a, just a couple announcements this morning. If you are a visitor or new to Sanctuary, uh, we would love to get to know you a bit and just want to welcome you. We do have a newcomer connection form that we'd ask you to take a moment to fill out. It's super short and easy, and uh, I will go ahead and share that in the chat window. You will see that link there. And then secondly, don't forget everyone to check out our church blog for our weekly sanctuary stories. And it, those feature people within our sanctuary community, what they're up to during this outbreak, this pandemic. So this week's features Becky Schaffner, sanctuary member, retiree, nature enthusiast, and all around amazing person. Um, it was a delight to catch up with Becky this week. And you will see on the blog a couple photos uh, from Becky including one of the yellow rumped warbler, which has to be one of the best named birds ever. Imagine being named after your rump. That's all I've got there. All right, next up, we are going to share a short video. This past week, I caught up with Jackie Marquardt to interview her. Jackie is a sanctuary staff member whose entire staff position is working with and for IC Compassion. Uh, IC Compassion is a nonprofit that assists immigrants and refugees. And so Jackie and I met over Zoom and we did a, a brief interview and to find out and hear a little bit about how the outbreak has affected IC Compassion and her work. So let's take a look at this video. I think when I first started, it was in January and the, the biggest part of my job was going to be development and stewardship. So looking at fundraising and um, how do we thank our donors, do we have events, um, and trying to work on a, a fundraising campaign and a stewardship campaign. All of that sort of came to a grinding halt in March. Um, I see Compassion shut down all their services with the exception of their food pantry. So the food pantry previously was a very small part of IC Compassion Services. They did classes and immigration assistance, legal assistance, English classes, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, 
and then they had a small food pantry. Okay. Well, now, right now, it's, you know, 100% food pantry, and the need has just grown exponentially for IC wow. Compassion. Yeah. Yesterday, actually yesterday, Wednesday the 15th, was a record day. Um, they gave out as much food yesterday as they normally do in a week. Whoa. And in April, they um, prepared food for 1,625 families, which is almost 4,000 individuals. And we were doing probably less than half of that before. Yeah, so, so with, with the Exploding Need, can you talk a little bit more about that? Like how have other organizations or other people stepped forward? What's that been like, especially with the limitations uh, at this time? Um, I think we are really lucky to live in such uh, an engaged community. Uh, everybody really cares about everybody else. And it's not just the other social services, it's all these other businesses. So there have been, uh, a, there was a partnership built with the Coralville Food Pantry, the North Liberty Food Pantry, and uh, the Community Food Bank okay. to start doing food delivery to families so that they don't have to physically come to the food pantries anymore. Mm. So if they need food, pan food assistance, but they don't have transportation or they don't feel um, safe leaving their home, they can get food delivery. So that has been a, a big partnership with the other food pantries in the area. Wow, great. But there's also been lots of things with, uh, for example, uh, Big Grove and 30 Hop, they took a bunch of bulk rice and their staff took the time to break those down into individual size packages that the food pantries could give out. Mm. Uh, because we can't give out huge big bulk bags of rice, so they were able to do that work for us. Um, I'm used to uh, I'm used to Big Grove and Thirty Hop being known for <laughs> other um, items <laughs> being shared, but yes, that's rice. Why not? That's great. <laughs> yeah. um, tell tell us about just other needs that you ex you anticipate in the future here, and if if there are any ways Sanctuary can help. Right, I think. Um, you know, the state is reopening, but for the foreseeable future, we as I see Compassion are not planning on changing our, our setup. Um, we might start doing some more immigration work on a, just an appointment basis, but we're really still going to continue focusing on a no contact food pantry. So uh, monetary donations for the, to the food pantry are like our biggest biggest needs right now. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. We're hearing that a lot. And um, of course, folks are very free to give wherever they see. The church also is giving. Uh, Absolutely, you are. Organizations in need. So, yeah. Well, great. Thank you so much, Jackie. This has been yeah. delightful. Appreciate all the work you're doing. Thanks, David. All right. That was fun. Uh, we're just honored to partner with IC Compassion and just delighted at the work Jackie's doing. So wanted to share that with you all. Uh, next up, we will hear from our kids ministry director, Leanna Cornelli. Leanna, tell us what's happening. Good morning. Uh, today on the Kids Wing blog, we are exploring the idea of belonging and in particular how God's big love allows all of us to belong. So to celebrate this community that we're all a part of, we are inviting all of you, everyone, to participate in a fun rainbow selfie project. So the idea is this, find a colorful backdrop of any kind. Uh, we might suggest one of the big, beautiful murals in downtown Iowa City, for example, and take a selfie in front of it, and then send those selfies to me by next Thursday, the 28th. I will compile them all into a video and we will celebrate our beautiful, colorful community. Um, so even though we are apart, we still belong to each other. One other invitation, next week we're hoping to celebrate our sixth grade graduates. Um, so parents of sixth graders, um, please send me a photo of your student by this Thursday, the 21st, so that we can recognize them on Sunday. Um, so. In summary, this Thursday, send me sixth grade pictures. Next Thursday, send me 
your colorful rainbow selfies and that's for everybody. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Leanna. Appreciate it. Okay, let's continue now. We are going to uh, pick up with a song of worship recorded by Amy Hospodarski, one of our regular worship leaders. And after we sing, we'll transition to our senior pastor, A.D. Wasink, for this morning's message. So we'll hear the song now. And please join in singing. Pam, you'll have to... Sh oh, thank you. Thanks. You were sitting under the old star twisting The forest sounds with cedars breaking Everybody, good to see you all. Hope your weeks are going well. Jesus, thank you for being with us. We're grateful that Zoom is working for us this morning. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness. I pray that you help everybody. Um, who's with us now or listens during the week have at least a few moments of connection with you like that's what my hope is for this time God um, that everybody would find that they connected with you in some way before the morning was over we bless you amen well I'm part of the Wednesday morning contemplative prayer group and I went in this past Wednesday kind of feeling claustrophobic. Tom mentioned last week that we were supposed to have a couple um, hiking vacations um, last week and then again in June that we had planned for like a year. One of them um, took, a, you have to make at least a year reservation to Yosemite. Um, 
And so I think by now Tom and I are just feeling a little bit claustrophobic. We hike a lot, but it's the same hikes and the same trees and the same, and they're glorious and we're thankful. But I had that feeling like I just want to get away. So anyway, I'm in um, this uh, small group and this week Corey read a poem by Mary Oliver called Praying. And in the poem, Oliver describes praying as paying attention to any ordinary thing. And the poem begins this way. It says, it doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. And Corey invited us to find something that was in our room or the spaces we were in and practice a few different forms of contemplation. So I um, am scanning my room for that thing that's going to jump out at me. And the first thing I notice is that my closet's open, which completely freaks me out because I know I can't possibly meditate with my closet open. It's like starting dinner and realizing your kitchen cabinet's open, which is like impossible. You have to run and close it before you can enjoy the meal. So as I'm getting up to um, close the closet, my eyes lock on this pair um, of hiking boots. And I immediately um, know that this is going to be the object um, that I'm going to be talking about. Um, and I got these hiking boots like a zillion years ago on sale. This one winter, my kids were little, and we went to Michigan. We had the winter doldrums. We wanted to get away. The weather was kind of like, there was no snow, but it was cold, and we were just kind of tired of it. So we went to a house that we often rented in the summer, a cottage. Um, and while we're there, we got stuck in a snowstorm that we didn't anticipate and in true washing form hadn't planned for. So we had to quick go out and get some supplies and I got that pair of shoes that uh, Tom showed you. Um, and so this is about 20 years ago and I'm looking at the hiking boots that are still in great condition. Honestly, they were my best purchase ever. And I start uh, remembering, remembering like cycling through all the different places that we'd hiked in them over the years. And I can see my family in the Smoky Mountains and all these hikes and all the lush foliage and, and the little waterfalls and the kids sliding down and Tom and my hike to Devil's Lake and our climbs there. And, and, and we hiked in these boots like a couple of years ago, this thrilling a hike on the coast, along the coast of Wales. But as I'm, I'm, looking at the hiking boots and I'm thinking, suddenly I have this memory that I find myself in. And me and Tom are on this narrow path in Glacier National Park. It's this 15 mile hike that I am convinced is one of the most beautiful hikes in the world. And we, not on purpose, hit it when wildfires were, uh, wildflowers were at their best. So they're orange and purple and yellow and like, on both sides of us, like just blanketed with these um, wildflowers. And there's longhorn sheep that are like, you know, 10, 20 feet away that are staring at us as we're walking. Our kids are just old enough that they can run ahead. So it's uh, Tom and I by ourselves with the beautiful uh, wildflowers um, on either side of us, the longhorn sheep. And as we're walking and we're noticing, suddenly we encounter this moose. And the moose is like eight feet away from us. And it seemed like he must have come up from sort of a hill because we encountered each other at the same time. And we and the moose had the same look, like this is awesome and how should I feel about this? So we're standing still because we weren't sure of moose protocol. Um, and I'm a little bit probably more nervous than Tom. And after about 10 seconds or so, the moose uh, wanders away. And Tom says to me, 
that was Jesus. And I'm looking at him and we had actually been fighting. I know that's probably not surprising anymore because every time I give a teaching, it's like about the fight that Tom and I have that week. And then I usually try to say something about how we're madly in love and happily married, which is also true. But we see the moose uh, after we've been fighting on the most beautiful walk of our lives. And Tom is convinced that the moose is Jesus. And we have this moment of transcendence where we're just appreciating uh, God's presence to us on this hike. Our fight seemed completely moot and we walked in awe for the rest of, um, for the rest of that, the 15 miles to get to the end of the hike. Um, and so with all the claustrophobic feelings that um, I was finding myself in as I showed up into this small group, um, in the context of this spiritual practice, I find myself traveling the world, and it was uh, truly wonderful for me. Well, this morning is going to be a little bit different. We're going to do an experiment. So for anybody who's used to attending sanctuary, you know that every few months, in, um, if, when we're in the building, we have a spiritual practice Sunday. And this Sunday, we're going to try our best to do spiritual practices, knowing that everybody in your different um, living situations are going to have different experiences. Liana has um, helped me to try to uh, make things accessible as we can to kids um, as well. We're going to do three different um, practices, but we're going to start out um, by reading a psalm. So Psalm 77 is a powerful psalm of lament, of despair, um, of remembering, and finally hope. So it's going to guide our spiritual practices. Um, but it's not terribly kid-friendly. So I asked my son, Luke, if he could rewrite the psalm for us this morning as if he were writing it um, to read to his uh, little girl, Maddie. So this morning we're reading Psalm 77. I'm going to read it to you. Um, translation from Madeline's daddy. So Psalm 77. I yell, God, help me. I want God to hear me. When I'm sad, I look for God. At night, I stretch out my hands to God. And I'm sad. God, I remember you and I'm sad. I'm so sad, I can't sleep. And it's hard for me to even talk. I lay awake at night. I remember the songs that I used to sing to God. I wonder, will God ever help me? Does God love me anymore? Did God forget to be kind to me? Then I think I should try to remember things God has done for me. I remember all the amazing things you've done, God. I will keep thinking about the things that you've done. You do amazing things and everyone sees. You use your strong arms to help me. Even the water wriggles when it sees you, God. The clouds pour down rainwater, thunder booms, and lightning is the arrows from your bow. You make a way to walk through the sea. Even when the water is very deep, you show us where to go like we are a flock of sheep. You send your friends Moses and Aaron to help us. Amen. And thank you, Luke. All right, so the rest of our time, we're gonna attempt three spiritual practices together. You'll let me know how that goes for you. We're gonna do a lament. We could call that a complaint. We're gonna do a remembering. We're gonna do a specific kind of remembering that might be a little different than what we're used to. And we're gonna do a time of dreaming because sometimes when things are hard in life for a sustained period of time, dreaming is one of the things that we lose. And you guys, we cannot afford to lose dreaming. So we're gonna do a dreaming exercise um, at the end. And I've worked with Leanna to offer a potential kid-friendly practice. 
if now, maybe during the week, or you'll just have it, uh, should you want. So the first one we're doing is a lament. I mentioned uh, rec in a recent teaching, and I, we might have done a similar exercise, um, that instead of pulling together a small group um, during that week, I pulled together a group to complain because I was in a complaining mood. Um, and I called it Gripes and Grumbles. And I kind of think I should market it because I thought it was kind of a clever name. Um, and I was tired of working so hard to find things to be thankful for. Because like there's moments where it comes naturally and there's moments like being thankful kind of ruins my tantrumy moment, kind of like, makes it hard to enjoy my feeling pissy. Sorry for that word. I don't know if it's okay, but that's kind of <laughs> describes it best. It's recorded on Zoom now, so. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we have a long tradition of lament and we find it through scriptures, especially in the Psalms and Prophets. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a moment and you can write or speak and we're gonna create our song of lament or our psalm to God. So we have some prompts um, and maybe the prompts will help you. So it could be, God, I'm tired of, or God, I'm disappointed that, or God, I'm worried that. And maybe for kids who want to do it, it could be, God, I'm mad that, or God, I really wish that or God, I'm sad that. So feel free to be your tantrum self and not you're like, I'm showing up for a business meeting unless those two are the same thing um, and address your lament to God. We'll just take a minute or so. We'll just take a few more seconds and please feel free to finish any of these later. Amen. Okay, I hope that worked for some of you. Um, I confess, I used the kids. I liked the I'm mad that one. I felt like I was mad that we weren't in person because I thought I was being funnier than I am sometimes and I wanted to hear you laugh just in case anybody was really laughing because I can't hear you over the phone. But thank you for smiling, everybody. Okay, number two is a remembering. Okay, there is this story that we tell in our church over and over and over again. And for those of you who've been here long enough, you have heard this story now many times. And it's not even that it's the only kind of the story, but we tell the story because it's extreme, because it confounded our faith, because it confounded surgeons. Um, and we've titled the story, we call the story, How the Holy Spirit Healed Jeremy's Dad. So the story is that Sheremy is this young woman who attended our church for several years. And one Sunday, we did spiritual practices, kind of like we're doing now, though we were in person. Um, 
And as part of it, at the end, we had a healing service and we invited anybody to come up who had any kind of physical need and we were gonna pray for you and anoint you with oil. Well, Sherry's dad ends up being with us, being with us on that day and her dad believes in God. He was a church attender, but he did not necessarily believe that God was a God who could or would choose to heal people um, in a way that we might think of as miraculously, like on the spot. But it happened that on uh, her dad, that Jeremy's dad was scheduled to have surgery the next week because he has this sizable uh, tumor that's resting on his trigeminal nerve, um, a nerve in his face. And he's been in excruciating pain um, that has grow been growing for the last two years. And this tumor was recently discovered at the hospital and they had x-ray of where they were gonna go in and remove it. Um, so she's there with her mom and dad in the service um, and wondering what her dad is thinking because he doesn't necessarily believe in all this. Um, we're doing a communion invitation and this anointing for oil invitation and Jeremy's surprised because her dad stands up and starts walking down the aisle and he walks to us and as he's walking he's got tears streaming down his face and he's crying 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 he doesn't really know why he's crying um but but as he comes to us and tom and i don't exactly know what we're praying for um like it says you have to have faith of a mustard seed i am not convinced we had the faith of a mustard seed i'm not even convinced we knew what was going on we were a little nervous by the whole thing because by the time he gets there he's like on his knees and he's sobbing and we've never um met him before but uh finally um um am i okay finally um when he's done he says to us when he's done sobbing he says to us this is the first time in two years where i have had absolutely no pain so he is like totally ecstatic barely able to speak and he goes ahead with the surgery because he doesn't know like did they rem did god make it go away is it just the pain going away and i got a call when he was still like coming out of the effects of anesthesia so sort of drunk sounding saying the holy spirit took away my tumor the holy spirit took away my tumor and daughter share me um gets on the phone with me and she's just sobbing saying the surgeons were super apologetic they couldn't explain it they're showing us the x-ray two weeks ago with this tumor and saying we have no explanation there is no tumor. Well, the psalmist tells us when you are hurting, right? The psalm that, that we read, it says when you're hurting, when you have lost hope, when you have lost evidence of God's goodness, that is the time to remember. Um, so I retell this story, this particular story, and all its glorious details when I need to remember that God is bigger than my perception of God, when God is even bigger than my faith in God. So our second exercise, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a minute, everybody's like start thinking, and you're trying to think of a time when God specifically moved powerfully in your life or the life of someone around you. So maybe it's a time when you prayed for someone and you were like surprised like oh my gosh god did this thing or you got prayer for something and wow it actually happened in the way like god answered uh, my prayer or maybe it was just a moment where you were you're surprised by god's goodness like you saw something there's like just surprised by god's goodness and for any kids who, who are listening who would like to try this or maybe parents who want to work with your kids during the week god loves to hear your stories kids and god loves to hear your memories you can say and write or write or draw god i remember when or thank you for a time the time when and you can decide what that is. So we're gonna take a minute of silence again and just see if there's a moment of God's specific goodness to you that comes to mind. Try to flesh it out 
and enjoy that moment and see what it resurrects in your heart. We'll just do a moment. We're just going to take a few more seconds. And again, feel free to come back to any memories later on. If anybody had memories that were really special, I would love for you to email them to me. I would love to hear and to be encouraged and to be able to encourage one another by the things that God's done in our lives. This is our last exercise, you guys. And this is dreaming. This is important. Maybe you guys are doing really well with dreaming during COVID. I've had to be really intentional with dreaming. And, and I'm a dreamer. I can usually dream. I kind of live dreaming about things. Um, but we're gonna do a dreaming exercise. So the book of Revelations was um, probably written around 90 AD, maybe 91. It was not a good time for the followers of Jesus at that time. And at the end of the book, the author envisions a, a new day. The author says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the Holy Spirit, I mean the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and God will dwell with them. They will be God's people and God will be with them and will be their God. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Okay, we're just gonna take a minute here, a few moments, I'm gonna pray and I'm just gonna ask God to give everybody <coughs> an inspired dream or vision. And it could be as simple as I'm dreaming of returning to work in a normal fashion, or I'm dreaming of, of a more normal way of life. We have a lot of graduates this season. Maybe it's I'm dreaming of what comes next. Or it could be an invitation or a calling, like maybe God inviting you to dream about a potential new job or vocation or a new creative endeavor. Um, maybe it's God uh, giving you hope for joy that you haven't had in a while. Whatever it is, I'm going to pray and we're going to take a few moments and see if you hear anything from the Holy Spirit who loves to bless us. Oh God, we don't want to lose our capacity to dream. You've made us dreamers. I ask that even now, God, even now, you would fill our hearts with dreams. Come and reveal your dreams to your people, oh God. 
kids, you can say, write, or draw, God, someday I hope that. Take a few more moments and everybody come away with a dream, please. Allow yourself to dream. Amen, sweet friends. We're going to close with Revelations Remixed by Tom Wasting. <laughs> so I do want to note before I read this that uh, if Adi and I ever give a conflict resolution seminar, tip number one will be to go find the moose that is Jesus <laughs> wandering in Glacier National Park somewhere. So good luck with that. But yes, here is Revelations Remixed, particularized for us. Then I saw a brilliantly sun-drenched world, for behold, the shadow of COVID had passed away. I saw the holy city, the new Iowa city, coming down out of heaven. I could see handshakes and hugs and noontime full contact basketball in the South Field House gym. There were no more masks or gloves or sudden veerings off the forest path into poison ivy as strangers approached. Grocery store aisles were once again bi-directional. Children were laughing and crashing and tumbling in playgrounds newly released from their nasty orange plastic safety netting. Hospitals and their workers were healed from their traumas. And church, ah, church. The greeters were greeting, the bagels were steaming, the children were romping and we were singing together full-throated to and with Jesus, no longer wondering how far do my aerosolized droplets go. <laughs> and we smiled as we passed each other on the way to and from the communion table. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, I am sick and tired of this mask. My dwelling place is amongst my gathered people, and I will dwell with them in closeness and friendship. They will be my people, and I will be with them and be their God, and I will personally wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more dying or mourning or crying or fear, for the old order of things has passed away, and the new has come. We love you, Jesus. You give us hope. You give us the capacity to dream. Be with us now as we continue in our worship. Amen. Amen. Thank you, AD. Thank you, Tom. We're going to transition to one closing song, uh, and we'll share that again from Amy Hospodarski.
Jesus, you <coughs> are our hope and our dream in this season. We bless you. Say, blessed be your name. Oh, God, we lift you up. May you all have a great rest of your weekend. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this morning.